Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts. We are here at the MDA Armageddon event and we've got Matt Ward. Matt, your biggest event, the calm before the storm at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. It always seems to be the one that takes the longest. It was the like, closest one, whether because you don't get as prepared as you normally do with like, the ones that are quite a distance, you know, you can nip back home. So yeah, I've been here since about 8, so it's about what, 4 o'clock now? So yeah, yeah, ready to go, just waiting for the players to arrive. Expecting a good crowd in tonight? Yeah, about 800. It's usually what we get, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it, obviously. Bit of a special one with Paul Gaskell and playing Phil as well, so we're waiting for Gaza to arrive in a couple of hours, so that'll be quite funny. When worlds collide. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, he's still ridiculously popular, even though he's not played for 15 years. So yeah, really looking forward to it, yeah. Should be a good night. Obviously as well, last night, as the darting manager, you went through the mill, yeah. so to speak, with, with Daryl, but you got there in the end, and we saw the relief and emotion on your face as well. Oh yeah, well just, this year's been so up and down with him, really, and especially when he got absolutely hammered, 7-1 and 7-0, and you know, I, I'm the one that's sort of like always there with him and he gets upset and you know and, and like especially after the 7-0 and he went, we went to minor the next day it's like come on you've got to get up for this and he's like oh I'm not good enough and stuff and you know last night was like a big payoff for him and obviously after last week it was nice to just let the darts do the talking but yeah I was, that's the most nervous I've ever been watching a darts match. I say the highs and lows you touched on that, they, that's the things that people don't see, they, obviously they see the player on the TV, they see the emotion there and then, but they don't see the stuff that you see behind the scenes. No, it's like we get there at three o'clock, so we're sat there four hours, so people just turn the telly on. I feel the darts is on, not knowing what the day's been. Usually entails of me driving up on the day, if it's in England, having a Nando's with him, and then straight on to the venue at three, three, four o'clock, and I'm just reading the paper and listening to him talk nonsense a lot of the time, so just really just being there. When he needs, when he vents, when he wants to moan at people, I'm the one he moans at, and just, just lid don't goes in one ear out the other. I just try not to listen to him, and obviously when it's game time, it's that's that's what the payoff is. Whether it be a big down or a big high, you know, you always get that something at the end of the night to look forward to. You touched on last week as well. We're going to have to talk about it obviously yeah. because it was trending on on, on Twitter. Yeah, it's worldwide. Yeah. What, what what was your take on it first of all from sat where you were? From me. Um, I wear Dal Gurney tinted glasses anyway, so I thought it was Gezi all the time. I was like, Gezi's overreacted here and Dal's, Dal's never done nothing wrong and stuff. But, you know, I, I, half an hour into it, after it happened, Dal says, you're quiet. And I was really looking at it back thinking, yeah, he overreacted there. <laughs> but he completely, he run got Gerwin up, said, I'm sorry. Um, Gerwin had a go at him a few months ago and Gerwin texted Darwin and said, I'm sorry. I don't think them two will ever, they'll always be friends, but they'll always be feisty on the board and they'll always fall out. I think there'll be loads more fallouts in the future as well because they both care so much. Dal was more an introvert on stage and Gezi's an extrovert, which is their two styles, where Gezi needs that to fire, fire himself up. Dal can't celebrate because his heart rate, so I'm looking forward to them both playing. They're both world-class players and although Dal won the day this time with the getting fourth, I'm sure that Gezi will have his number next time they play, that's how it seems to work with them. I mean, Gez has got a great record against him, but it seems to be back and forth at the moment. So. Have you had the letter from the DRA yet? Uh, no comment. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's a polite way of saying, yes, you've had the letter. I haven't, I haven't told him yet, so I'm <laughs> waiting until, um, until after the Premier League, and then uh, I'll comment on it, because I just want him to get, get, a, get a good, good run, because he's pulled out the Pro Tours as well, so I want him to have a bit of a rest for Thursday. I'm, I'm guessing thing. you're hoping the fine won't be as big as uh, <laughs> said fines and that in yeah, the future. Oh, well, you know, no, I can't really say a lot, whatever the, the fine is, I don't know. I can only comment on Darwin, he hasn't got any previous of doing that. He's done, I mean, people cite the Whitlock event, we never actually got referred for that, so that can't be cited, nothing happened there, you know. The, so we'll wait and see, whatever, whatever, the, whatever the charge is, we'll look at it and, uh, and deal with it then. <laughs> Not talking about the Pacifics, just in general though, as a darts fan, would you rather see these rivalries than the tin robots, because if you go back decades, we had obviously Peter Manley was the king of the gamesmanship mm. and there was rivalries there. Then for some reason, for me, they went to robots on stage and now we're getting to the rivalries again and I personally think it's good for the, the game. What's your thoughts on it overall? Uh, it depends, I mean, snooker's boring because you've got robots. So you say it was trending, Barry and I'll be loving that it's trending, they'll take the punishment. I think you need, you need, you need players, you need characters. Um, and you need this because the sport will get monotonous and, it, and how many times can you say went out in 12, went out in 13, uh, you know, if they both could have had 110 average this week but they're still to talk about last week because it's so tight and some of the finishing and the reactions is what makes sport, you know. The best moment in Dallas' career when he won the Players' Champion, he showed his emotion like that when Gezi won the Grand Slam, take away the 
all the nonsense. You know, you saw the emotion of winning and that's what you want to see. You want to see how the players actually feel and you want to get an insight into it. And Dal's never been guilty of showing his emotion. You know, on the other side, Jamie Hughes never shows emotion. So, no. you know, Jamie's probably the nicest man I know, but never, never shows emotion, so. So moving on to the finals next week, Daryl plays MVG. Yeah. One of the rare players that has an exceptional recent, recent record. Recent record, yeah, it's about 15 four or something. Yeah, but he's won the last four in all competitions, last three on TV. He's done three out of the last four, he lost in the semi-finals of the recent year. But then, do you feel confident going in there with yeah. that record? Because obviously players look at current form and they, they all, they're all well aware of records against each other. I feel confident with everybody, whoever he plays, he's the best player, one of the best players I've ever seen in my life. He's got the biggest cojones, he's the biggest, you know, yeah. he's, got, he's got guts, he's, he never gives in. I know, I think everybody fears Dow now, and they should fear him, because he's one of the best players in the world, and if you don't fear him, there's, uh, you've got a problem. Up to a career high as well, three in the world. Yeah, he's still not good enough. Number, I was saying, number two is beckoning, because Robbie's defending an awful yeah, lot of money. So where, <laughs> he is, but not as much as Rob, in fairness. Rob's got, obviously, world winner's money. Yeah. Coming off and Euro tours. Yeah, but Rob's 300 grand in front, so. But I think this second place is up for grabs. Second place in the world is up for grabs. Number one is completely done up, so it doesn't matter. But second place is up for grabs with anybody. Michael is clear away, head and shoulders above everybody over a consistent basis, but on a one off game, anybody can beat him. Um, Ian Weiss beat him. Uh, no, he didn't. Uh, Dow beat him. Keegan Brown beat him. And Peter Hart beat him in the yeah. Euro. So, um, you know, he's beatable over one game, but consistently, if you play him, 50 times, he's going to win 45 of them, because that's how good he is. But at the minute, we're having them, that little run, so I hope like them, so. Would you like to see a change in it? Because that's a very topical one, yeah. always on Twitter as well, because it's not really fair, I don't think, the two years. So ba battery change, so yeah, going back to the rankings, you would like to see a change in it because of the rigidness? I, and I think with the tennis, if you win Wimbledon, the day after you win Wimbledon, they start to decrease. Yeah. So it comes around to a year round, whereas you get a more fluid ranking system. I mean, Aspen would be like third in the world, would it? Yeah. Something like that. And obviously Rob won the world. Rob's playing great darts, unbelievable darts, but he's not winning anything. So his ranking is based on that one event. And Mike, not all of it, he'd be in the top 16, top 10 maybe. But then you've got Michael Smith, who'd probably be in the top four of the yearly rankings as well. So I think a yearly one would be better, but you know, it is what it is, you just carry on and play. I think it's rigid the way it stays there, so that 100 grand stays there for two years, and then, so you get into everything for that two years. I think if it started to decrease the minute you won it, I think you'd see a more fluid system, and you see the better players performing at the top when they're on form. Well, it's like James Wade, he's won three Pro Tours this year and hasn't moved in the rankings one bit. For me, that's not right. No, nah, but I mean, to be honest, the rankings, is, it's, all, it's just, a, it's just, you get in the World Series top four, but really the rankings is, is irrelevant if you're in that top 12. You're always going to be put into the pot for things such as Premier League and World Series, and that's based on your popularity. So, I mean, like, um, that was very popular at the minute, and he gets invited to a lot of things, got good walk on, good personality, and the same with Garrett Grizzly Price. And Peter Wright's dropping, but I think he'll be in everything because it's more about entertainment as well as the darts. It shouldn't be like that, but you need to sell tickets, and that's the old point. That's why we've got Gazza playing darts. Who wants, who wants really, uh, you wouldn't think to see that, but people say, Gazza playing darts entertainment, people will be entertained, so that's what we're here to do, so hopefully we'll Barry is on, just on the long for the ride. As well, obviously the rest of the stable, Jamie Hughes making strides mm. this year since winning this tour. today. <laughs> I know we had this little debate on Facebook the other day, the match play isn't that far away from him. Mm, it might be too much now. Still, I, obviously, yeah, I know as we're doing this, he obviously hasn't qualified, yeah. but there's still five events, big events that James do. Wilson's the one that's still in today, he's playing so well at 5-1 up. Um, and lost 6-5, I think he's the one that's in danger of dropping out, but Jos uh, will next year, Jos will be in everything, if, whatever he gets in this year is a bonus, so it's not really, we're not really bothered, we said we wanted the Worlds, the Euros and the Players' Champs, two of them have been ticked off, he's got to do well on the floor now, um, that's all we're looking at really, because have a nice steady start the first year, and then next year progress, because I do think some people, if they shoot, shoot up, you set that bar so high that you, next year you think the hard second year, Dean Wynn Stanley had it, um, Stephen Bunting had it as well. Um, I can't think, this is another one, real high profile. Rob Cross maybe had it as well the second year, but because yeah. his ranking was so with the World Championships, maybe he didn't fall as much. But it's nice to just keep steadily progressing and building. Like Darrell had two dodgy years. And, like Benito maybe, I managed Benito, and he had a great first two years, and the bar's set, I'm always winning, I'm not winning now, what do I do? So I do think sometimes it gets into your head, so first year, be great to um, 
just have them three TVs at the end of the year. Maybe sneak in the Grand Slam as well, that would be a nice bonus for him, because I know he loves the Grand Slam. So. You touched on the Jamie Dodger as well. How is his eye? Because we yeah. spoke to him at Dudley and he said he was really, at times he was really struggling with it. How is that injury? It's better, getting better, but I've told him he can't use an excuse, and he says the same. So he can't use an excuse, but he's playing well, just needs to get the results now. James's career has always been like that, and it's always going to be like that. Never get too upset when he's down there, never get too excited when he's up there, because he's always going to be ready for a fall, and he's always going to be ready for a climb. That's how I judge James Wilson. He's consistently inconsistent. He's the most inconsistent player I've ever met. Nicest person as well. But you know, I never get too excited when he's doing really well. I never get too down when he's doing bad because it all changes like that, like click of the fingers. But his eyes getting better. He'll, as soon as that's sorted, he'll be he'll be at the rankings. But today, five on up average, 112 against Kev Benes, and then loses six five, 112 average. That's how good he can be over six legs. So hopefully tomorrow and Sunday he can pick up a couple of grand and try and cling on to that last match play plays because it's drift, drift, drifting at the minute. I was going to say, everyone, that everyone, everyone's said about is the match play, the match play, the all roads are leading to Blackpool yeah. right now and it's tough for managers, players, fans, everything because it's just all up in the air. thing is with it is, it's not as big as it was when I started managing seven, eight years ago because there's only so many TVs. There's that many opportunities to win that big wedge now that it's not as imperative. It's nice to be there and it's a good payday for the first round but it's not as imposed as it was six years ago. It would be amazing to be there. But the big one is the world's. That's where you make your, make your money and you know a couple of wins there can change your season. Too many TV events oversaturated for you? Uh, which, which hat? As a manager's hat, no, because it's great. You get it. But as, or, and as a fan's hat then? As a fan's you... hat, maybe a couple of them. Um, uh, the World Series in Australia doesn't really garner much TV attention, but um, that's because it's pre-recorded maybe, I don't know. Um, if it's pre-recorded, people don't really want to watch knowing the results, but the Vegas one is unbelievable because it's live. So, no, I mean, it, it's all going well to selling out, so it can't be. So, as long as it keeps selling out, great. But um, as a fan, you used to obviously have a couple of months in between. Now, I don't think there's a break, there's a law. It's all darts, which is great if you love your darts. But I think a lot of people will intermittently switch on and off to certain events. They'll always watch the match play, always watch the Worlds, the Grand Slam. Premier League has got great figures, maybe some of the little tournaments only the hardcore fans watch, but I watch it all the time, so as you do. So, yeah. For me, it's great, there's loads of darts, but I, if they're selling tickets, they're going to keep doing it, so fair play to them. Matt, thanks for taking time out to join us. We'll let you get back to the madness yeah, of getting ready today, mate. Have a drink. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, Phil.